Hey everyone, my name is Justin. If you've got your very first triathlon coming up, whether that's a sprint or something longer, then this is the video for you. Today, we're talking about the 10 that are gonna help you out and make that race as smooth and fast as possible so you can get through it, enjoy it, get a time that you're really proud of. If you're new here and you're not already subscribed, I hope you go ahead and subscribe so you can come back for more. But with that said, I'm not gonna waste any time on this video. I just wanna dive in and get to the tips. The very first tip that I would give for you is relaxing and enjoying it not setting a blistering time. Your first triathlon is about getting through the race comfortably, more so than it should be about making sure that you absolutely nail everything perfectly. This might sound like kind of a soft tip, but I can personally attest that making mistakes and stressing out will tangibly slow you down. You're gonna be upset about the mistakes that you made earlier, whereas you could just slow down a tiny bit, relax, accept that you're gonna make mistakes, and have a much more enjoyable time. It's also really important to accept right now that something's going to go wrong in your race. It's important to mentally prepare yourself for that now so that you're not on the side of the road in a panic when you have a flat tire that you've never experienced. So things like knowing how to change a flat tire or knowing how to swim in choppy open water or racing in bad weather, these are all things you can get into your training so that you're ready for them on race day. Any triathlon, regardless of distance, is a series of good decisions that stack up to result in a great race. If something isn't going well, focus on the controllables, focus on staying present in the moment, actively work to identify the solution and executing that solution rather than panicking and letting it ruin your day. Number two is don't get fancy, especially for your first sprint triathlon. You really don't need to stress about gear. I've done a couple of videos on gear recommendations and essential gear before. Those are gonna be in the description if you wanna check out the specifics. You're not gonna have the most expensive bike there. You're not gonna have the most expensive running shoes or the fastest wetsuit. It's perfectly fine. The difference between a truly $10,000 bike and a $1,000 bike that fits you well isn't that much, especially in a sprint triathlon. Fitness matters way more than the gear in pretty much all aspects. So number three is gonna make this a lot easier for you, especially if this is your first ever sprint triathlon, and that is you don't really need to worry about nutrition. The body stores about 2000 calories roughly of glycogen within your muscles if you're fully carb loaded, and that's plenty to get through an hour and a half to two hours of racing. Taking in a little bit of sugar on the course is gonna essentially tell your body, you don't need to conserve, we have additional fuel coming in, and that's gonna up your potential a little bit. The really cool thing about a sprint is you're pretty much never gonna hit that point of glycogen depletion. Quick primer on carb loading, it takes about two to three days to completely fuel up with carbs and store that as glycogen in your muscles. I just like to shift my diet as heavily towards carbs as possible. List of great foods right there that are gonna help you out. On race morning, if you can get in like a bagel or a banana or two, pretty carb heavy breakfast, about three hours before the start of the race, that's ideal. Especially on a sprint where your times are shorter, it's really important that you eat efficiently. You don't wanna spend a minute eating a gel if you're not gonna gain a minute because of that gel. So a couple really quick, efficient options. If you wanna use a gel, you can actually tuck it into the sleeve of your wetsuit and take that two to three minutes before the gun goes off at the start. The other good option is take a gel and leave it on your bike seat so when you get into T1. And then my preference is actually to use a powdered nutrition like Tailwind or Scratch and put that in your water bottle so that when you drink on the bike, you're actually intaking calories as well. You know you're gonna drink water on the bike, so you might as well get some sugar and calories. There's links to those uh, down below as well if you wanna check out the ones that I use. Caffeine in studies has been shown to improve endurance athletic performance, so if you're going to already be taking a gel or some powder or liquid nutrition, you might as well get some caffeine on that as well. Make sure you're fully awake and cognitively engaged. Number four is pay attention to where you rack your bike in transition. It's really easy to put your bike on a rack and then you've set it there and you think you know where it is, but when you come out of the water, you're coming out of the water a different direction. You don't remember which rack you were on, you lose your bike and you're gonna spend 30 or 60 seconds running around in a panic. Simply count the racks. When I'm coming out of the swim, I'm six racks in and on my left. Secondly, look for a landmark. I advise against trees. You'll see a tree that you think looks distinctive, and I swear when you come out of the swim, they're all gonna look exactly the same. You're not gonna remember it. Third little tip, I actually picked this one up in a comment from someone a few weeks ago, so I appreciate that. Bright, colorful towel on transition underneath all your gear, green or pink, 
that'll help you stand out as well. Number five is specifically focused on those of you who do not have a swimming background and maybe you're still a little uncomfortable with the swim. And that is simply slow the f down. There is no time to be gained by going out hard on the swim, overdoing it, panicking, having to slow down. It will work against you. It will set you up to not enjoy your race. And in case you think I'm just being hyperbolic, I've actually brought my computer out here. We're gonna do some quick math to prove to you why this is not worth it. If you are a fast triathlon swimmer, not necessarily a fast collegiate swimmer, but if you're in the upper end of swimming for triathlon, like you might be doing like a minute 30, minute 20 per 100. For a 750 minute swim, that is a 10 minute and 20 second swim. A pretty average swimmer, like an adult learner who's maybe self coach, they might be doing about two minutes 10 ish per 100. That person is gonna do that same swim in 15 minutes. So a four minute and 40 second difference, 210 per 100 to a 130 per 100 is probably years of real effort and coaching. So let's flip that question around a little bit. Let's say you're a 210 swimmer who can swim comfortably all day at 210. Let's say you get in your head that like you're gonna go really fast, you're gonna work really, really hard, you're gonna red zone yourself and you swam a minute 55. So you cut 15 seconds off your 100 time. You have now saved 90 seconds. My very first triathlon, I was that person who decided to save that 90 seconds by going out as hard as possible. I way overdid it. I ended up nearly throwing up in the water. I was gagging on water. And then I actually had to back float and rest. The water is just a barrier to entry for the rest of the race. It's not where you need to put your effort or your time as a brand new beginner. Your goal is to comfortably and safely get through the swim nothing else. Number six continues that last theme. If So if it's an open water swim, you're going to want to start on the shore on the back outside. So if it's a right turn around the first buoy, I like to start on the back left. Uh, and once the gun goes off, even if you just give it a five second count to let the really fast aggressive people run into the water, and then you can go in, you're going to make that gap and you're not going to be fighting over the super aggressive swimmers. If your first triathlon is a pool swim, you're not going to have to worry about that. But I would suggest starting maybe in the back ish a little bit so you're not going to have people fighting over you who are faster than you have a little confidence in yourself too because i've seen people in races who actually see themselves too far back and then they get caught behind slower swimmers who are ahead of them accurately assess yourself and try to maybe ask the people around you the pace that they're planning on swimming number seven is about transition and it simply comes down to don't stress about transition the problem that a lot of people have with transition is they try to do it super, super fast. And then like we talked about in the beginning, they panic, they freak out, they make mistakes. If you're coming out of the swim and you're wearing a wetsuit from an open water race, I like to get the sleeves all the way off and get it pulled down right around to my waist. A little bit of body glide here will really help the wetsuit slide off quickly from your ankles or your wrists. And then otherwise you'll already have your gear set up right on your transition towel. And the biggest tip that here that I can say is lay it out in the order that makes sense. So put your bike gears closest to you and then your running gear a little bit further away. Number eight is a tip that solves a problem I see a lot of beginner triathletes make at sprint triathlons. And that is put your bike in the right gear so that when you get on it, and pedal, you're in a gear that you can actually do something with. So the next time you go out to ride your bike, spend 10 minutes uh, starting from a stop and figuring out what gear feels good to you so that you can put one hard pedal down and actually get moving. Generally speaking, I like to be in a bigger ring up front. Also recommend taking a look at the course. If there's a big hill right at the start line or a big descent, that's gonna affect your gear too. So make sure to keep that in mind. The ultimate goal here is to leave your bike in a gear that's gonna work from the start line up to that you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds when you can more comfortably and safely shift rather than having to do it right when you're stepping on your bike and everyone around you is stepping on their bikes too. Number nine is about going faster on the bike. And that is if you wanna be faster without spending any money, aerodynamics is the number one thing to keep in mind. Time you make up on the bike is really, really where you can make a lot of progress. So regardless of how fast you are, getting low and aerodynamic and small on the bike is really gonna get some big returns for you in terms of your total time. Actually, the slower you are, the more these aerodynamic gains matter to you because you spend a longer period of time on the course. If you're not very fast on the bike, Aerodynamics is actually really, really important because you can see some big gains. So a couple of things to keep in mind is essentially keep yourself small on the bike. So that means 
ducking down as low as possible, keeping your elbows in as close as possible. One little move that actually will get you some pretty big gains is remembering that you don't actually have to have your head up the entire time. So a lot of times you'll see people biking kind of like this, uh, where their, their body's bent over, but then their head's up. And for one, it's actually kind of uncomfortable. It puts a lot of tightness up here. And then this additional airspace actually will slow you down quite a bit. So you can actually bike closer to like this, where your head is looking down at the ground, kind of, you know, three to five feet in front of you, but then you can look up with your eyes. The other thing is clothes do matter. You know, now's a good time to break out that tight jersey that maybe doesn't fit as well as you hoped it would. Uh, you're gonna save some meaningful, tangible time as well. So break out that tight jersey, you're gonna go faster with it. All right, and the number 10 thing is, when you finish your bike ride, your legs are gonna feel like jello, and that run's gonna be hard, but you have to trust that you're still able to run. If you've got a GPS watch, now is actually a time where they're actually kind of an advantage. Even though your legs are probably gonna feel really heavy and rough, I actually see that most people are able to still run their normal pace. And having that watch is gonna help you out because it's gonna tell you that, yeah, you are still actually moving. Mile one is gonna feel rough. Biggest thing here to remember is that this feeling will go away, you're probably still running your normal pace and to focus on keeping a quick leg turnover. Mile number two, you're probably in your groove and that slow, sloggy feeling is probably starting to go away. So if you wanna actually make a move and try to put a little bit of work in, mile two is actually kind of a good place to do it because you're not feeling as tired from the run yet. And then mile three, if you're a beginner, is where you can really focus on the finish line is just 10 to 15 minutes away. You've definitely completed your first triathlon, you're going to get your medal, and that is gonna pull you to that finish line. It's gonna be tiring, you're gonna wanna stop, but here's where you really need to say like, I'm not gonna stop, I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna work really, really hard, because it's just three or four turns away. If you've got a little bit of time before your first triathlon, maybe more than two weeks, would definitely recommend doing a brick workout or two or three to get yourself used to that feeling. If you've got maybe five to 10 days, you can do your planned bike workout and then maybe a five to 10 minute run. And then if you've only got about five days left before your race, I probably wouldn't recommend doing a brick workout right now. You're not really gonna get any advantages here. Focus on during your race, staying strong in that first mile and it will feel better. All right, so that's it. 10 tips for your first sprint triathlon. I chose to make those really specific and tangible and I hope you guys got something out of them. I hope you subscribe. There's a lot more videos like this coming. If you have any questions, questions about any of this or anything else, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. There is no question too small, too silly. I will absolutely do my best to answer it. That said, I will see you on the next video. Go have a freaking awesome race and thanks for watching.